Hi, I'm Steve Harper. I'm the CEO and founder of Owner Insight, and I want to welcome you to our Owner Insight podcast. This is going to be a really short episode. It's in follow-up to our previous episode, which was talking about the school bond elections. Some schools passed their bonds, other schools did not. And I want to talk to those school districts that maybe didn't have a successful result at the ballot box. It is completely understandable that there is a tremendous amount of um, voter frustration because of the economy. There's a lot of distrust, right, in terms of public funds. And that's one of the challenges I think school districts are up against in this election. Now, we haven't seen the total breakdown of what the numbers will look like, not just here in Texas, but nationwide. But my early indicators uh, seem to show that we had less pass than were expected. And one of the things that I think is super critical for school districts to do in a post-election situation is to have a real hard look at what efforts were put forward to educate the public about what the real needs are. Obviously, you probably engage someone, a consultant or an architect to help you form the plan. um, And that plan was uh, developed around specific needs, facility assessments as an example. There was a lot of data collected. And what I have found in years past is the hangover from a lost election on a bond situation can be um, sort of dramatic and it can be um, debilitating to a lot of school districts because you feel like you didn't have the trust of your voter base and uh, and or didn't make a a strong enough case. Either way, uh, people never want to look at failures and um, uh, they kind of want (laughs) to shove that to the side, you know, push it under the carpet and, you know, sort of look to um, re-engineer, regroup in a couple of years when, you know, the appetite for a more positive result might happen. I want to say here and now that actually the hard work needs to begin now. Obviously, you know, on the surface, there's a whole lot of needs that aren't going to be met by an influx of new dollars, right? So you have to reprioritize your projects and, and, uh, those maintenance and facilities needs aren't going to go away. We just have to now need to figure out how to address them with existing funds. And so one of the things that I see districts do is they'll put that bond, all that data and information that went into the bond package uh, on a shelf and it doesn't get looked at again. Maybe it gets a cursory glance before we start the process over uh, a couple years from now, but most people don't utilize it in an operationally effective go forward way. So one of the things that I wanted to propose here for our school district leaders is don't do that. You know, a couple of things right off the bat, take a look and be honest and look through clear eyes as to what the successes were in leading up to the bond election and what the failures were and what some of the challenges maybe your voter base may have experienced in in giving you the thumbs up on the, uh, the vote. And really diving in and understanding what, um, you know, what was the, you know, what was the attitude of your constituents? What were some of the concerns? And that, that means that school leaders need to ask for that input, ask for that guidance, set up some community meetings and, and ask them what they needed to hear or see to have, a, 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 you know, their vote go a different direction. That's important. Um, I call it a postmortem, right? When we lose a sale opportunity, we always kind of go back and say, what could we have done better? Uh, where were our fallbacks? And oftentimes we'll go back to the prospect that may have selected someone else and we'll say, hey, what could we have done? You know, what, what helped lead you that direction or helped you, um, you know, sort of uh, move one way or versus our way? <laughs> and the, the information, if you come hat in hand, not crying over spilt milk, but you literally want to learn to get better. Uh, you'll find that people will generally tell you, hey, I, I didn't like the communication message. I, I felt like there was too much emphasis on new facilities or athletics. And, you know, I see my you know, child's elementary school falling down around his ears, right? You know, I think that having those uh, ability to hear that input and, and to get that guidance from your voter base is invaluable. I would also say I would look very closely at the team that you assembled to help you do the run up for the bond, right? Uh, the professionals outside the district that were hired to help you market this, help to get the word out, to uh, figure out what the pulse of the uh, voter base might be and and where the disconnects were there. 
And I'm not saying assign blame. I'm saying learn from the potential failure of, or learn from the failure of what could have been potentially improved, adjusted, um, you know, were we sort of going on blind faith or building uh, a, a case around um, uh, our facility needs and we didn't do a good enough job at explaining what those were, giving those proof points along the way, uh, either through written or web material that was distributed so that your voters could make an informed decision. And then look at the team, right? How committed were they to engaging your public? How committed were they to actually putting boots on the ground and getting engaged and having conversations? I think that's a real critical factor because you're going to eventually be approached about them doing it again, or you'll have to consider another team. And really what is helpful for your district is to look at what didn't work and understand it, shine a light on those things. I know it can be uncomfortable and it can be frustrating, but understanding what doesn't work is one of the first steps to getting a successful outcome the next time around. Sometimes it's teams, sometimes it's their approach, sometimes it's uh, overconfidence, maybe the wrong personalities in the front of the room, I don't know, but you really do need to have an open and honest conversation with your leadership team at the district, with your bond planning committee, and to a degree, asking back that partner to say, what do you think where did it go wrong? What happened and why? So that's an important aspect. The other aspect I said was, you know, now we've got to start the war from here, right? So where is that list of needs? How are we going to organize it and reshift our plan, right? Because you got to build a whole new plan. So how are we going to address these things with existing funds and start building um, a game plan around that? And that's pretty critical. And this is where I see a bigger mistake for districts is they often don't get the data. They don't get the information that went into that plan to make it operationally effective to them. So you as a district paid for this, you need to control that information and that data. We have a tool called Facility Insight that can help sort of organize that information for you. But whether it's our tool or any other tool, um, you need to own it. I often find that the districts walk away with pretty looking reports and they often uh, walk away with a, a nice bond plan, but they don't actually have the data that went into it. And you paid for that data from your partners and it's critical that you get it, you understand it, and then it becomes, or it gets placed in an a, in a environment that makes it uh, operationally effective for you to have a go forward plan or to start to formulate that. And I think that's a big, big factor that districts don't think about. And it's a, it's a major uh, challenge because, you know, everybody wants to move on from a loss, including your consultant or your architect, because nobody likes to be reminded of things that didn't work out. But there's so many lessons that can be gained by understanding what didn't work, where you could have improved, what the messaging needed to be, and getting that direct feedback from your constituents, I think is super critical. And um, it'll be certainly valuable for you as you formulate your next go, go forward plan with uh, your next bond. So, but I think at the end of the day, I think it's also so critical for you to have the information and the data in a way that the district owns. Because you know probably a vast majority of um, the efforts that went into this were generated around the assessment work, the pictures and the documentation and that needs to be in an environment that you can say okay great you know this is what we're going to you know utilize to help us make some upcoming decisions in the short and medium term and long term this data also helps inform us what we're going to have to do in the next you know three to five to ten years and you've got to have that in a in a in a place that is easily accessible highly collaborative and allows you to start putting the work in right now for whatever comes next. I know that a loss um, on any level really stinks. And I know that it is, um, it's frustrating in a lot of ways. You guys are rock star heroes. Those of you that are leading school districts, you're trying to provide the best facilities uh, for your students and your staff. And you're trying to do the very best you can with limited budgets. And I get that. But uh, I want you to make sure you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, as I see so many districts do. Uh, they they want to run from the failure. They want to run from the loss. They don't want to look at what what uh, you know what was in the plan uh, because it hurts, and you feel like uh, you were let down by your voter base. And I get that totally. Um, but at the end of the day, um, there's a lot of positives that can be gained from that. No. 
and there's a lot of hard work that still needs to be done. So you can't ignore it and you can't just, um, you know, just let it stagnate. It's, uh, it's clearly, uh, it's clearly something that I think that you need to utilize to get better and to, uh, organize a new game plan. And as I said before, you got to start the war from here, right? So how do we real, you know, how do we address what needs to be addressed immediately? What needs to be addressed in the near term? And then ultimately, how do we start planning for the future and delivering a approach and a plan that you can get early acceptance and understanding by your constituents. And one way to do that is to having clear line of sight into the data, the information, the collection of it. Um, I can't tell you how important it is for a school leader to be at a community event and somebody says, hey, you know, my little Johnny goes to, you know, XYZ elementary school and, you know, I'm just very unhappy with the condition of the, the school how powerful it is for that leader to be able to say, well, let me show you what we're dealing with here at this campus. And then let me show you in comparison to all the campuses. And I know you're unhappy and, and I'm unhappy too. We need to find a way to partner together to address these things. And I'd really like to invite you to be a part of the process. I was telling somebody yesterday, you know, in the tech world, um, you know, good CEOs often, you know, come to the table and say, look, don't bring me the problems, bring me the solutions because we're, uh, the people that are in the trenches, that are in the, uh, you know, in the day-to-day -day fight, often know what needs to be done long before you know the higher ups do. And so, as a district leadership team, I ask you to trust in your people, trust in the you know the approach that you are going to take going forward to have this data and information that's already been collected, already been paid for, to help you inform what those right next steps are. Ask the deeper questions. Be willing to come to the table and have honest conversations. And when you can collect it in a way that allows you to be able to boop, pop this open on your laptop or your cell phone and show a constituent, this is the work that went into this. This is what we're trying to accomplish. And here's where our shortfalls are. And here's where our issues are. Uh, every district has these problems, big and small. And so the more that you can make the, the process as transparent as you can for your constituents to see this is how we arrived at this list of needs, how we arrived at the cost for uh, addressing those needs. And we can back that up with, you know, data that is uh, informative, not sort of, you know, smoke and mirrors you are setting yourself up for a much better conversation along the way. You're gaining trust. You're building uh, visibility for what those needs are. And who knows uh, where those conversations could lead to get the right kinds of people energized within your community to help you the next time you go out to bond or at minimum become active contributors right now to help you do what you can with what you have. So I wanted to just make this episode as a follow-up to the last episode because I think it's super important. Um, Owner Insight and our solution of tools, we've built them for school districts to really add value and to solve problems that we have seen firsthand at the district level. And we'd love an opportunity to have a conversation with you and tell you where we think we can contribute and add value. Uh, and at minimum, we can at least make sure that you're on the right path to walking away with the data that you're entitled to, formulating a game plan around that data as to how to address, address the short and the medium term needs. And then planning for your long-term, you know, next step in terms of your future capital or bond plan. So uh, reach out to us. We would love to have that conversation and, uh, you know, share some of the benefits of our experience and what we've seen and uh, not, uh, you know, try to help you not have an unsuccessful run the next time uh, by utilizing data and this different, more informed approach uh, to making sure that you are putting your best effort uh, forward you know, all the time. So that is, um, that's just something I wanted to share. I, I certainly know that a loss is not one of those positive experiences, but you can learn from this loss and you can come back stronger and better because of it. If you're willing to put in the time, you're willing to have some of those difficult conversations and you're willing to uh, collect that data and begin to shape it so that you can utilize it point forward now. Because, hey, let's face it, what other choice do you have, right? All right, guys, I really appreciate you tuning into this podcast. We are uh, going to be back very soon with another episode of the Owner Insight Podcast. But until then, you guys all take care. Mm -hmm.